What up guys, my name is Eric and in today's video we're going to be installing an Auburn Locker limited slip front differential. So in the front diff it's a Dana 44, we're going to be replacing the stock crappy open diff and replacing it with this awesome Auburn Locker grip and lock limited slip differential which you can see is a beefcake right there. This Auburn Locker is made in America so you know it's made with quality because it's made right here in the USA. This casing is 50% stronger than the factory casing. The cone clutch technology in this Auburn locker is 25% stronger than any aftermarket limited slip differential on the market today. So you know when we launch this baby at 700 horsepower with all the nitrous and boost our little 5.2 can handle, we're going to be putting all that power to the ground with zero issues from this limited slip differential. This diff also comes with a two year warranty on it. So you know they stand behind their product because they're giving you that two year warranty and you're gonna have nothing but success in the future. So in today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to get it installed, how to get it set up. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get Whitey up on the hoist, get those wheels off, get the brakes off, get the hubs off, get the axles out, and then we can get the diff out. So we got the front diff totally torn apart. We got the differential out. We got the caps marked. We got the pinion out of it. We got axle shafts, wheel bearings, brakes off of it. So we are about ready to start installing our new limited slip differential from Auburn Gear. Um, we made some dummy bearings out of the old bearings, so we actually pressed off the old bearings, ground out the centers of them, and are gonna use them as dummy bearings before we put the pinion in, so we can figure out our total shimmage of the differential. Uh, these bearings are ground out in the center, so they do just slip on and off of the differential for this reason. Like that, usually those should be pressed on, but we ground the centers out of the old bearings just so we can use them as dummy bearings. You can buy the special tools, but this is a cheap, easy way of doing this. So I'm going to get this diff installed, get the dial indicator out and show you guys how to set up total shimmage for the differential. Total measurement for uh, shimmage, so it was 62 thousandths, so we're going to add 15 thousandths for bearing preload. So our total shimmage should be 77 thousandths. So now we're going to get the diff out of there, get the pinion in there, figure out how much side of the shimmage should be on the ring gear side and how much shimmage should be on the pinion gear side. Zero. That's thirty. Forty-two thousandths. So we just got a measurement of forty-two thousandths. So that's the shimmage that uh, to get zero lash on the ring gear side of the differential we would need. So we're going to do probably well minus from forty-two thousandths, four thousandths for backlash. So that gives us. 38 thousandths and then we'll minus that from 0.77 from 77 thousandths and that gives us 39 thousandths so on the pinion side pinion side we're going to add 39 thousandths of shim and then on the ring gear side we're going to add 38 thousandths of shimmage so let's get this diff out and let's get some bearings pressed on. So we got our 39 thousandths worth of shimmage right there. Uh, we're using an old race to press a new bearing on, making sure we can spin this free lay while there's pressure on it so we're not destroying the cage. That's one side. And we're going to get the other side with our shimmage right there, 38 thousandths. Guys, stuck back in to the truck. Got the diff in, and we're going to torque all these main caps to eighty foot pounds of torque. Now 
now we're actually going to check that backlash so that's actually the ring gear meshing with the pinion gear and how tight it is we want it between like four thousandths to eight thousandths so we're actually going to get the dial indicator set up here and actually check what that measurement is so we got it right at four thousandths show you guys this Right at about four or five thousand, right there. So that's perfect. So now that we got that locker all installed, everything set up right, you do not need to check meshing of the pinion gear to the ring gear if you reused your stock ones. Um, we did not, so we did actually check that and it turned out awesome. So the next thing we're gonna do is on our passenger side of our axle assembly, we actually have a two piece axle shaft and a dog clutch that actually disengages and engages these axle shafts together. Uh, so when you put it in four wheel drive, there's actually a vacuum hub on top of the transfer case that pushes uh, this little diaphragm over, pushing this dog clutch over and engaging the axle shafts together. Uh, we deleted all our vacuum systems on this truck, so we're gonna permanently lock this. So we have already started by cutting off the vacuum hub itself, threading, actually tapping an MPT fitting right there. And we're going to permanently lock this axle shaft together. You can buy one big axle shaft, but it's expensive and this is pretty much free to do. You just have to have some taps and a pipe fitting. But yes, so this dog clutch does ride between these two and is what actually connects the two together. So we're gonna permanently mesh these two together by permanently holding this in one spot. You can see right there, that's where the shift fork sits and this guy is snug and it's all the way bottomed out. So we're gonna add some Teflon to this, put the shift fork in, add some snap rings and get it installed into the truck. It's nice and clean before we stick this RTV on it. Get the dog clutch lined up. We are. Get her. And this will probably be the last time we'll see the Auburn locker, unless we want to regear the truck again, but that will be in there again. This is a 5 ace square plug, which they do sell sockets for, just like that, otherwise you can use just like a dust pull wrench on it. But they do sell fancy sockets for it. So the first thing we're going to put in is actually Auburn Gears Friction Additive into the diff for that limited slip and what this does is actually lets the clutches slip just a tiny bit so you don't get chatter out of them or anything like that just like that so now we're going to just stuff like four quarts of fluid in here and call it good